Having a wonderful, 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 happy new year. <laughs> if this is our first time together since the, you know, the, and I think it is, I think this is our first time together since the beginning of the, so happy new year to everybody. I hope, I hope nobody out there allowed anyone to ruin your time, to ruin your day, to ruin your year, the beginning of your year. I really, I, that's what I hope. Diversity is a problem, ladies and gentlemen. That's how she look. But listen, so happy new year, everybody. Hit that like and subscribe if you have not. Um, I saw, just as we get started, I saw, I saw a little Cat Williams interview today. And I thought to myself, I said, self, he said, this is going to be the year, the period of truth. And I said, self, 
<laughs> I think I agree. I said, self. <laughs> I think if I had to, if I had to call it self, I think me and Kat on the same page with that. With with everything from these these files, you know these files coming out about who did what and what Bill Clinton did and what they did on the aisle. And I don't want to mention no names because don't be don't be getting me. Don't be getting me and all of that. That's not my forte, but I do believe this. Ladies and gentlemen, is the era of some truth telling. Okay, some era of some truth telling. So that's what we've been doing for a long time. So we are in our lane. This is a glide path, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get to it. I want to get to it because I've seen a lot of crazy stuff over the past few days about Claudine Gay. And I did a video about her, but we got to get back into it because she has now resigned. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you did not know, she has resigned um, with a heavy heart. But I want to bring up something very early about the plagiarism because that's that was a, we have a lot of people. What's well, this a black woman? This is what happens to black women. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. These people who are talking about this is what happens. This is what happens to black women. They don't care about ADOS. They don't care about black women because they don't show up most of the time for you or me. But let me just tell you, let's just address. Let's not get up ahead of ourselves. Let's address the plagiarism. Because they're no longer allegations. I hear people tell me, well, there was no plagiarism. Uh, Jonathan Bailey, a plagiarism. This is CNN. This is not some far right wing thing. And we're going to get to the motivations of this in a second. Jonathan Bailey, a plagiarism and copyright consultant who runs the site Plagiarism Today, told, told CNN Gay's resignation was likely the best thing she could do for her school, for her and the school. CNN spoke with two plagiarism experts about new allegations of plagiarism against Gay as, as first reported. And that's what they said by conservative publication, The Washington Free Beacon. So you have people here who are who are not the most, who are not biased, who are saying, yeah. Kind of smacks of kind of smacks of smacks of plagiarism, don't it? That's what they're saying. This is not we are not people got to get out of their minds of just talking about these 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 these, these the, the 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 people on the right who did this. Like, let me tell you something. Let me tell you when you might want to stand down on something. If you find out if somebody told you they didn't do something and then you find out that they did do it, it's time to stand down. Right. It's time to stand down. And what they're telling us and what they have been telling us for quite some time is that on this topic, it was it's been time to stand down because there what solidarity is there. I want somebody to tell me that, too. What solidarity is there between us and Miss Gay? Not only is, do we have a different lineage, she's the progeny of Haitian American immigrants, but we also, I'm not, I never went to Exeter. I never attended an elite school. She has an elite life and she wanted to be at an elite institution and she got what she got. But honey, they fight. When you get over there, they fight. You better be ready to go to blows. And when you can't, and when they find out that you were not up to par, you cannot come back and then say, well, the, the black women. No, 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 no. They found something out on you. How they got there. You don't have to agree with how they got there, right, about who. And we're going to get to some of the biggest critics. But when somebody get there and they got the goods on you, then they got the goods on you. You can't, you can't call it what it ain't. So Michael Doherty, a professor of philosophy at Ohio Dominican University, who has written two books on plagiarism, told CNN over email, the problem here is that readers of gay, gay's text cannot, from text itself, tell whose voice is speaking. In the text, ladies and gentlemen, he added that academics and students are obligated to write in their own write their own sentences and give credit when word when words originate with someone else. Using quotation marks, footnotes in the right place, block quotes, and the like. The apparent failure to use quotation marks. Come on, man! The apparent failure to use quotation marks. That that Dave Cannon's authorship over these words is suppressed, even though Cannon is is mentioned elsewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, this is something. This is a based on Harvard's own criteria. She's a plagiarist. So let's get it out of there that these are just accusations. We have they have talked to a bunch of people who have said that the resignation is overdue. 
the right, the, the people on the right who disagree or maybe whatever, who disagree with diversity and who wanted her out there have proven their have proven what they thought. They said that she was not ready for the job and they were able to prove it. She has only like what? 11 published works and half of them have found plagiarism. We got wit. You cannot do that. Miss Gay. I don't know who done told you wrong, but you cannot do that. You cannot have that much plagiarism, and you're supposed to be at the helm of this elite institution. Now, I don't consider Harvard elite because of what Harvard did to ADOS. I do not consider it elite, but it is considered by many, right, to be an elite institution. It is, darn, I got some in my head just that quick. It is considered by many <laughs> to be an elite institution. You cannot, ladies and gentlemen, you absolutely cannot be at the helm of what's considered an elite institution and have plagiarized at this level. And you cannot just stand with her because of the blackity, 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 black, black. It doesn't work that way. You know, it's the funniest thing, and I've said this before. We work so hard to be considered twice, twice as good, right? We work so hard to be considered twice as good, and now we're in a position where we are defending someone who can't defend themselves against claims of plagiarism. And when we find out that it's true, everybody says, everybody says, it's like, when we find out it's true, it's like, oh, she's a black woman. Listen, it used to be the case that you had to find evidence of racism. Biden. Biden had to resign in the 1980s because of plagiarism accusations. He was supposed to be president or could have been president when he was actually fit and wasn't too old. So this idea that it only happens, it only happens to black women, this is attack on black women, when it has happened to white people, it doesn't make any sense. And people are carrying us down a bad road where we used to believe in meritocracy. We used to, as ADOS, say that we have to work twice as good to, to, to get in the door. And now we're saying we got to support this mediocre lady because we share melanin and, and, and kinky hair. Listen, we do not have to do that. We owe you nothing. We do not have to do that. That is not something that is an obligation. You come from an elite class of people. And you wanted to be in an elite group of people. You wanted to be around these people. Here's this little bit from the article. Despite results, despite the results of an investigation commissioned by the Harvard Corporation last month that found cases, uh, uh, cases only of inadequate citation, new charges about her work include episodes of what most scholars would recognize as academic misconduct, including plagiarism. Experts consulted by CNN considered the recent uh, excerpts to be plagiarism, and I agree. I was a professor for almost 35 years at multiple institutions, including Harvard, where I taught courses for their continuing education and summer programs for 18 years. I have referred students for varying punishments based on similar misconduct. Let me pause. <laughs> I have also sat on boards. I've sat on boards for such claims. So you have somebody here who has done the thing, right? You have somebody here who has done the thing. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Y'all got to be kidding me. This is who we riding for. There is no way around the reality that the person responsible for Claudine Gay's predicament is Claudine Gay. <laughs> Y'all got to get quack, quack. Uh, perhaps in a few instances, Gay forgot to attribute a source or a place or a footnote. But that's not the issue. All of us who write academic works, I've written seven books for five university presses, could probably get called out for some clunky paraphrasing or a few bad footnotes. And sure, maybe her dissertation committee and her later peer reviewers and editors might have been too forgiving or inattentive. No scholars carry a full compendium of their field's work in their head. Spotting plagiarism or poor attribution is difficult even with advanced software, and it was harder before uh, technical innovations. And let me tell you something that's going to get real hard. Let me tell you something that's going to get real hard. It's going to get real hard for black academics, and y'all should blame yeah, black and ADOS, and y'all should blame Claudine Gay because she, she set herself up to look like a diversity hire. She was not up for the job. She has not published enough. She has not done enough. And the reason a lot of y'all do not understand 
What plagiarism is is because a lot of y'all have plagiarized. <laughs> Let me say that the, the people I'm talking about are the people who run around using uh, Antonio and Yvette's talking points and then say, well, what does it matter if I say what you said and don't give you credit? I, uh, it, it's all the same lineage. You, that's plagiarism because you have, you don't understand how concepts develop. There's a such thing as concept development. If you did not develop the concept in terms of wealth and lineage and the interrelationship and how that leads to reparation, you have stolen the concept. You have, you have stolen the concept. You don't even know that you've stolen the concept. What was the little man's name who went around and, and, and uh, uh, used uh, Antonio? Uh, I've heard my words and Antonio's words everywhere. And nobody understands the, the, the idea of concept development. You did not develop the concept. So, yes, you are stealing somebody else's intellectual property by going around and using all the same phrases, all the same work, the entire framework, and not giving them credit. So some, of, some people are thieves and don't understand thievery. Hey, Nicole Hannah-Jones. 1619 Project sounds a lot like the Adolf's Project. A lot of people out there, a lot of groups that have been saying everything verbatim do not understand what thievery looks like. You do not understand what concept development looks like. And so, yes, you are making unforced errors because you don't understand how to, why a thing is a thing. That is nobody's fault but your own, just like it's nobody's fault. Well, it's the same. I don't understand. If they're doing good work, event, why in the world is it a problem? If they're doing good work, they're doing the right thing, they're doing a the good thing. That is not the issue. The issue is that it took years to develop those concepts. Those concepts were developed by reading books, during conversations with Antonio and I. We did that. And you walk off like it's yours and you wonder why I get mad. You don't understand what, Cla what Claudine Gay did because you did it and don't understand why it was wrong. This is, this is an era where everybody who just walks around stealing and not doing work needs to deal with what they got to deal with. And you wonder why you can't progress because it's not your idea. You're working, you're working, you're walking in somebody else's footsteps. You're trying to play with somebody else's vision. So, no, it's not going to work. Over there talking about you got a designation and, and, they, and, you, and it's a deficit over there in California. And they don't even, they don't even, they about to give, they about to give, uh, uh, um, they about to give health care to undocumented immigrants. You walking around talking about, yes, it wasn't, California wasn't supposed to be for that. But it wasn't your vision, was it? Conceptual development is a thing. And Claudine Gay learned. Everybody's going to eventually learn. Everybody want to play. They, the, 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 these new things, I'm not going to go through all of this. It takes a while. But like I said, these new things, these new revelations show a pattern. Ladies and gentlemen, a pattern that is too damning to ignore and transcends excuses about sloppiness and accidents. Any scholar to say nothing of any student with this many problems in their work would be in a world of professional trouble. And in the end, Gay's name is on her dissertation and published paper. She, like any other author, is ultimately responsible for the integrity of her work. That word is integrity. It's important. And everything you do is important. None of this is an excuse to excuse the general awfulness of the people who have reveled in Gay's problems. When the Harvard president, along with uh, the presidents of the University of Pennsylvania and MIT, fumbled their way through, through, through questions. And I discussed this on um, Patreon, like the way they fumbled their way through that. About campus anti-Semitism during a congressional committee hearing led by pre uh, Representative uh, Elise Stephanie, I can't never pronounce her name, of New York, a proud MAGA Republican, Stephanie, and right-wing gadfly Christopher Rufo used Gay's appearance to put her in the spotlight. Penn, Penn's leader, Liz McGill, had since, has since resigned, and Stephanie now claims Gay's presidency as, an, Gay's presidency as another professional kill. And let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. By going this diversity route, you, made, you created an easy kill. Listen, I'm going to get into what he says. You, in, diversity is indefensible. And we're going to get into that. You made, you set her, you, you set yourself up and y'all set her up for not vetting her. She was never supposed to be there. She was never fit for the job. And by you, by the people who vetted her getting this diversity, we need a woman, we need a whatever, whatever we need. Oh, we need that. We need, we need a black or whatever. We got to fill all these boxes. What you did was make it. She, she's the, she's the shortest serving. Harvard president, president in the history of the country, and everybody's asking the wrong question. The question is not, the question is not, did Harvard get her out of here because she's black? That's not the question. That's not the question at all. 
The question is, since Howard, I mean, since Harvard had his first, his, uh, Harvard College admitted his first students at 8.30, it did not admit a black undergraduate until it admitted Beverly Garnett Williams in 1847. The question you should be asking yourself, first, first black undergraduate in 1847, that's before the Civil War. They admitted their first black before the Civil War, 1847. The question you should ask yourself when you look at this is not what is happening to 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 what is happening to um to to Claudette Gay. That's not the question. Those of you who are on Patreon, y'all know what the question is. The question is this: Why have we never had an ADOS president of Harvard? Why? We had a first student way back then, 1800s. And you mean to tell me you come into 2023, it takes you to 2022 or whatever it was, 2022, to get your first black president and they're not even of uh, 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 ADOS. You mean to tell me your first, your first black person is not an ADOS person and we've been here 400 years. You have got to be kidding me. And that's the question we should all be asking. All this dumb stuff about asking the wrong questions and what the people did. And let's see, that's, everybody's talking about the motive. I, I want to hear that. Please tell me. Please explain to me because I, I know you saw because we were, we, were we were twice as good. So I know good and well that we have had some very proficient and diligent uh, uh, ADOS people in Harvard. And we have never gotten, we have never, ever, ever gotten us one. We have never gotten an ADOS president of Harvard. Why not? Well, I know what some people would say, right? We know, we know, we know, we know what some people would say. We know what some of the right wingers would say. We know what Candace Owens would say. This is your daily reminder that immigrants from Africa as well as the Caribbean are among the most successful ethnic groups in the country. America doesn't discriminate against uh, based on people on based on skin color. Black Americans are just too focused on meaninglessness like Juneteenth. She just hate herself and everybody. What did y'all do to her? Can't be that much money in the world, but she don't know nothing. She don't know, she doesn't know anything. So what you find, study examines why black Americans remain scarce in executive suites, is that white people do know the difference and they self-select. And what they select, ladies and gentlemen, they select black immigrants over ADOS. It's not that we do anything wrong because y'all said y'all said that y'all said the black immigrants and their progenies were so much better than us. Well, well, Claudine Gay should be the end of that thought. That thought should be over with. When you look at let, only a few papers and we talking all the incidents of let that go. We got to let that go. Full-time professionals of Afro-Caribbean descent are more likely than those with Afri African or African-American roots to have access to senior leaders, the study found. Heritage, which we can use as another word for lineage, shapes black professionals' experiences of the workplace in profound ways, the report says, contributing to hierarchy, hierarchies that are rarely discussed. Candace. Just talking, just just all the emptiest drums make the most noise. No, that's not why we're falling behind. And no, that's not the conversation we should be having. Shout out to non-human media who, who, who put this up a while back. Overall, whites hold more negative stereotypes of U.S.-born blacks, rating them significantly less and less law-abiding and less patriotic while reporting more uh, neutral stereotypes of, of black immigrants. And here's the report. If you want to go take a look at, look at yourself, uh, intersecting boundaries, comparing stereotypes of native and foreign born members of ethno racial, ethno racial groups. They, we have a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a problem. We are not the preferred group. And anything anybody ever told you, I'm going to say it again so don't nobody miss it. Anything as anybody's ever told you is that, 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 that we are not the preferred group because we don't work hard enough and don't do enough and they just work, work circles around us. This story proves that that's a lie. They are preferred by the white people in the power structure. They're, the white people have a tier and we are on the bottom of it. And, and, they have, and, and a lot of that tier is shaped by diversity. So you get a lot of brown and black women mostly because women, you can check two boxes. I can check the woman, I can check the black, throw them both of that together. Oh, we don't care what she did or what, we think she can do it. So what happens too? Hey, Adolf's men, 
you get thrown over there. You don't, you don't check with one box. You don't check, Adolf's women, come over here and, and, and stand next to da 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 Right? Or, or we, but we prefer, if we have one, we prefer somebody who has immigrant parents and has an immigrant story. We love, we fetishize the immigrant story to the detriment of the people who built the country. And y'all want to tell me, these people want to tell me that I got to stand up. I just, well, I just stand with the blacks. Well, you, you don't sound very de 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 developed. This is misconduct. Every academic knows that putting their name on a published work verifies that they have done their utmost to observe their obligations. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not, this is, the, let me tell you, they went hunting because of how she handled that congressional hearing. Now that, I have a problem with the way they handle that. But you can't, when somebody is looking for something on you, you got to be competent. And she bungled that. Listen, you came to play. I would never want to go and be anything at Harvard. You should have, if you really had any kind of solidarity towards just Negroes in general, you wouldn't have went there after they wrote that smear about Adolf. You wouldn't have done it. You would have said because of, you would have said because of my, because of my uh, 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 love for my people, because of what they did to Adolf, I'm not going to say nothing. Let me see if I can find that. That's what you would have said. That's what you would have said if that's what you believe. But that's not what you said. You took the job. You took the job. These people wanted to be in that elite space with those elite people, and they didn't have any solidarity to me or you or the grassroots or what we've been doing, even after that was retracted. And somehow... In some way, I'm just trying to, how, why is that? I thought I put it in some way people expect or have some kind of expectation for me to have some kind of solidarity with her and people like her who never had any with me. Why? How? Where they do that at? Where? Where? Because when this happened, when this happened, nobody said a word. Stop talking to me about I stand with I stand with black women. I stand with my people. I stand with all people. I stand with all Negroes. You didn't st I stand with all Negro women. I stand with all Negresses. You didn't stand with me? Shut up. Nobody said a word. Nobody covered it. Nobody said a word. They had to retract this thing after we fought. Shout out to everybody in, in the org. Shout out to everybody in the ADOS HQ. Shout out to everybody who retweeted. We forced their hand to retract this. This happened the same year. Like we know, we filed we filed litigation the same year that that Gail, that Claud Claudine, was selected, and nobody said anything, and nobody said a word. These elite people stand for each other. They are just as much a problem as these other people. Because you want to tell me how racist Harvard is now? Somebody said, somebody said on my thread, oh, Yvette, this was, this, this is a prelude. This was a prelude. I mean, what, 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 you all were a prelude to what happened to Claudine Gay. Like, what happened to y'all happened to her? No, 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 we were not a prelude. Claudine Gay was the cover-up for what happened to us. We did this thing to, this, to these Negroes. If they try to do anything to us or whatever, we're going to have a black woman at the helm. And they try to call us racist because of what we did. We're going to have a black woman at the helm. She was a cover-up, and nobody had a problem with the cover-up because all these little people are just friends, and they're just friendly with each other, and they do not care about you or me. They do not care about Harvard doing anything to any kind of Negro. They didn't care about the um, uh, 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 Renty, uh, none of that. They did not care. They care about themselves and the people in their clique. And let me tell you something else. Let me tell you something else I want y'all to stop doing. Everybody, Howard University, you ain't never invited me nowhere. But y'all need to, in every, every other university, I saw Nicole Hannah Jones say, oh, Claudine Gay, come to Howard. Howard, stop taking, stop, stop taking the leftovers from white schools. Stop it. Stop it. Stop. You let Nicole Hannah Jones go there after she wanted to go to North Carolina or Chapel Hill or whatever, and now you want Harvard's leftovers. Have some self-respect. Stop taking white schools leftovers. If they wanted to be with a, if they wanted to be at HBCU, they would have been there. You were a second choice. So stop it. Now let me go. Let me just, I want to just go down some because one of the 
Claudine Gay decided that she wanted to, you know, and I want, I want to, I want to figure out who holds this L. When she got selected, when she got selected, let's, when she got selected, she was Haitian and she was a woman, right? And people were celebrating that. Now I just need everybody to hold an L. I don't, I shouldn't have to hold an L. She comes from an elite group. I don't come from an elite group. Everybody who was celebrating the first, this, this, this woman and this, uh, she's, she's a woman and she's Haitian. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta hold this L. This, this, and since we don't understand lineage. We don't understand that this is not our L to hold. And since everybody's running around talking about blackity, 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 black, we don't understand that this is, you know, this is a problem. Now, one of the, bil the billionaire who helped get her out of there, this is him, and he wrote a whole thing. And, the, and, and this is how they came after uh, uh, black history, which is really, I would have never let it been framed that way as coming after uh, uh, CRT. You, you just leave it as they're coming after black history. You can't make it CRT. You can't let a bunch of stuff, but they've handled that all wrong. We are, we are being run by incompetent people. Like this whole, our politics is being run by people who are, who are incompetent at the highest level of incompetence. So I just want to read a little bit of what, what he had to say. He first said, you know, the anti-Semitism caught his eye. Now I'm not going to read it because that's what he said. I saw people show up, 34 student organizations show up for, I'm not going to even say that word on YouTube, child. Don't give me, I saw them show up for H-A-M-A-S. And he said he was concerned, so he got involved. You Now, you got to be worried when a billionaire gets involved. Now, for those of you who are saying, oh, my God, he was worried about anti-Semitism, there's a lot of money coming into Harvard, and this is not just about how you may feel about politics. When, that, when, when, a, when a disproportionate money part of your money comes to people who may be worried about something, you got to be worried about it. It's not about what you want no more. You shouldn't have taken the job if you... If you can't manage their fears and their concerns, that's part of the job. Stop thinking about this from your own perspective and think about this from the perspective of a school that has like a multi $50 billion, uh, 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 what do you call that thing with the money, endowment. You got to manage all that. You got to know what you're walking into. If you don't know what you're walking into, you're about to get yourself in a lot of trouble. If you don't know what you're walking into, you are about to get yourself in a lot of trouble. That was her walking into that. Everybody knew who that billionaire was. Everybody know what he's given to the school. Everybody, that's, you know what the sentiment is. You know what you have to massage. You know what you have to do. You know that, or you should know that. This ain't me. This ain't you. She signed up for this. Like, listen, let me tell y'all something. I need people to stop signing up for stuff and then complaining. I'm, I'm tired of it. Like, if you, if you, here's the thing. If you signed up for this, it's like signing up for the Army and then complaining when bullets start flying. That's the job. Well, I didn't ever think there was going to be a war, but that's still the job. He said some very specific things. This whole idea of diversity has gotten us in a lot of trouble. Like, th this is trouble. A few weeks later, I went up to campus to see things with my own eyes. This is Ackman. And listen and learn from students. Right? I met with 15 or so members of the faculty and a few hundred students in a small and large settings. And the clearer picture began to emerge. I ultimately concluded that anti-Semitism was not the core of the problem. It was simply a troubling warning sign. It was the canary in the coal mine, despite how destructive it, it, it was in impacting student life and learning. Now, when this billionaire is on your campus, you have a problem. I shouldn't, have to, I shouldn't be the one to have to tell you that you have a problem. You should like you and you can't listen. Well, he be I no. When he's conducting polls on your campus, ma'am, you have a problem. Ain't nothing I can do about that. Right? That's when he sees things with his own eyes. And here, this is now it gets very interesting. It was a very interesting read. I came to learn that the root cause of anti-Semitism at Harvard was an ideology that had been promulgated on campus, an oppressor-oppressed framework that provided the intellectual bulwark behind the, pro behind the protests, helping generate anti-Israel and anti-Jewish hate speech and harassment. Then I did more research. The more I learned, 
the more concerned I became and the more ignorant I, uh, the more ignorant I realized I had been about DEI, a powerful movement that has not only pervaded Harvard, but the educational system at large. I came to understand that diversity, equity, and inclusion was not what I had naively thought. Cha. Mm. Let me go down a little bit more. Hold on a second. This is it's, it's very because it, they're giving you the game plan. I think when people give you the game plan, you got to pay attention. When people tell you what's about to happen, what's about to go down, you doggone well better pay attention. I have always believed that diversity is an important feature of successful organizations. But diversity, but by diversity, I mean, hold on a second. I mean uh, d diversity in its broadest form, diversity of viewpoints, politics, ethnicity, race, age, religion, experience, socioeconomic background, sexual identity, gender, uh, one's upbringing, and more. What I learned, however, was that DEI was not about diversity in its purest form. Rather, DEI was a political advocacy movement on behalf of certain groups that are deemed more, uh, um, what, what is more uh, deemed oppressed under DEI's own methodology. Under DEI, one's degree of oppression is determined based upon where one resides on a so-called intersectional pyramid of oppression where whites, Jews, and Asians are deemed oppressors and a subset of people of color, LGBTQ, and or women are deemed to be oppressed. Under this ideology, which is which is the philosophical underpinning of DEI, as advanced by Ibram, Ibram X. Kendi and others, one is either an anti-racist or racist. There is no such thing as being not racist. Let me tell you, the problem, ladies and gentlemen, is that you all have created this thing called diversity. And the problem is it is intellectually indefensible. Listen, if you tell me, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that this man or anybody else will agree with me, but if you come to me and tell me why should ADOS get something special? Or why should ADOS be oppressed? I have a litany of stuff I can give you about how we are still living the oppression and anti and discrimination and lynchings and housing, housing discrimination and mass incarceration that slavery, that slavery is built into the frame and the hierarchy. I can, I can, I can argue that. And I can win. The problem. I cannot argue with this dumb hierarchy that puts everybody on a tier based on the melanin or having a vagina. I can't do it. Like it is indefensible. And so it is when it's when it when you build something like that, it is easy to tear it apart. It is easy for somebody like him to come in and say this don't make no sense. And it don't make no sense. If you all are going the book club is October 18th on uh, Patreon. Indian Americans. They're the most elite Selected group, right? They're an elite group. Immigration is all about who gets to come and who gets selected by America. And there are reasons for that. They are elite. They are the most elite immigrant group probably in America. And they get to be a diversity hire and be considered disadvantaged or people of color. It don't make no sense. And what he, the, and that's the thing, that's the thing that allows him to come in and have this conversation this way because he has come to realize that you have an this 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 is indefensible. This version of diversity and this is indefensible. You can you can defend that these people were slaves, sharecropping happened, Reconstruction didn't do what it was supposed to do, Jim Crow, um, lynchings, white mob violence. Uh, uh, we didn't get any inheritance. Ran off our land. Land was stolen. The, the, um, the, the people at um, Department of Agriculture been racist since there was a Department of Agriculture. Didn't get no loans to be farmers. Farmland stolen. I can, we can go down, we can talk about everything that happened to ADOS. You cannot make a case that says I'm a woman or I'm an Asian or I'm an Indian and so I'm, I'm oppressed and white people and, and these people and they, they're at the other end. It don't make no sense. And so he's picking it apart and nobody wants to take responsibility for the fact that you put something together that don't make no sense. Under DEI's ideology, any policy, any policy program, educational system, uh, economic, uh, economic system, grading system, admission policy, and even climate change due to its dis disparate e impact on ge geographies and the people that live there, et cetera, that leads to unequal outcomes among people of different skin colors deemed race is deemed racist. See, you have to show that this is not about skin color. This is about lineage and something that, that, that precedes, goes all the way back before this country was a country. 
and we created a specific cast, which is an ADOS cast. Do that mean he's going to agree with me? No. I think a billionaire believes in meritocracy, and it doesn't exist. That's his lens. But I guarantee you I can make a case, and I guarantee you we can make a case that wins a lot of people in that room. Right? You can't make a case for that. You can't make a case for anything about skin color. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work that way. You, you can't come in here. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's, that's um, infamous, Eli. That's, that's what DEI stands for. You cannot make a case. You can only make a case for ADOS. I'm sorry. This should, everybody else should just be white. And I don't mean white in terms of skin color. I mean white in terms of, like, you are normal Americans. This, this thing that happened to us did not happen to you. And I put everybody in that category. I used to say, well, Native Americans, y'all got a lot, and you, you, do, you seem to be doing better. Um, <laughs> like, like let's, let's talk about the full expanse of it, right? We never got in the COVID bill, what y'all got. So, you know, you can't make this case. And see, let me tell you what this does. Let me tell you what this diversity stuff does. What diversity does, what y'all are basically, what, what Negroes who support diversity are basically doing, you're watching other people eat your food because nobody else deserves redress but ADOS. You don't deserve redress just because you, redress is fixing something. Nobody else needs something that, that needs to be fixed. Somebody whose parents got here from Mexico did, don't need, we, America didn't damage you. And you came here, you voluntarily came here for a reason. That's on you. You cannot do it this way. What, what's basically happening here to us with this diversity framework is that all people of color, they're all around a table of food. ADOS is back here for the most part. We got some gate, gatekeeper sellouts to be in the front and get part of the food too. So they up there eating too. The masses of us though are in the back cheering while other people eat the food. Yeah, yeah, give it to her. She deserves it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Claudine, Claudine, Claudine. That was your food. They never gave you the food, never gave ADOS a presidency. They get, they're eating the food, and you're back there cheering with your little ribs showing, little birdcage chest all out, and you over there. Come on, man. What are we doing? Are we okay? It don't look like it. As a result, according to DEI, capitalism is racist. Advanced placement exams are racist. IQ tests are racist. Corporations are racist. In other words, any merit-based system or organization that has or generates outcomes for different races that are at variance with the proportion um, of, 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 of with the proportion these different races represent in the population at large is by definition racist under DEI's ideology. Now here's another part: the techniques. And this is true. This is true. Because remember, this is true. Cancel culture. We got canceled, throttled. Everything happened to us. The techniques that DEI has used to squelch the opposition are found in the red scares of McCarthyism of decades past. If you challenge DEI, justice will be swift. And you may find yourself unemployed, shunned by colleges, canceled, and or you will otherwise put your career and acceptance in society at risk. The DEI movement has also taken uh, control of speech. Certain speech is no longer permitted. So-called microaggressions are treated like like hate speech. Trigger warnings are required uh, to protect students. Y'all remember when I was in, I remember one time, I never forget. Um, I was in, um, and I didn't mean to go away from it, but y'all you, you get the gist. I was in a clubhouse room and I was disagreeing with somebody about what ADOS is. And the, the, it, was, it, was a, it, was a, it was another, it was, I don't know what she was, but she was a black woman, right? And I was, I was disagreeing with her and I, she got loud with me. I got loud with her. Like, you're not going to get loud with me and you're just the only one loud. We can get loud together. So she, she started saying, violence, 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 violence. Wait a minute. There wasn't no violence. Anybody hit you. I ain't laid hands on nobody. I don't do that. I'm not, I don't do no assault. And I'm on the phone. We on the, we on the app. What are you talking about? That's the way they do it. So anything that triggers them internally is something. Right? You saw the whole Democratic apparatus come down on us because they didn't agree with the framing of ADOS. So there is something here, and that's the problem. The problem in this whole thing is that y'all gave y'all gave him this win. I don't agree with like with like with I don't I, I agree on diversity, but if he was talking about this in terms of ADOS, I disagree. But the problem is you gave him that. You gave him this space to be this way. You gave him this space to to like you created this really bad argument, and somebody came in and gutted it. So, like, at what point? Do you take responsibility? Now we get into reverse racism. You see, y'all did this. You, if you make a bad case, 
If you make a bad argument, your opponents are coming. The E for, for equity in DEI is about equality of outcome, not equality of opportunity. DEI is racist because reverse racism is, is racism, even if it is against white people. And it is remarkable that I even need to point this out. Racism against white people has become considered acceptable by many, not to be racism or alternatively. Um, that, remember the white farmers? It is deemed acceptable racism. Remember the white farmers who filed a racism thing because they were going to give it to all disadvantaged people? You can't give any kind of set aside to quote unquote disadvantaged people based on melanin or whatever and just say you're going to exclude white people, really white men. That was always going to get gutted. Now, I'm not saying that I'm not. Listen, we don't live in a world where I can say what would happen in the alternate universe. I can say, though, that y'all set this up wrong. Having darker skin, a less a less common sexual identity and or being a woman doesn't make one necessarily oppressed or disadvantaged. No, it doesn't. Got a lot of got a lot of wealthy white women. They were her property. Got a lot of wealthy gays and lesbians. They were they they got money. They they were the reason Obama finally decided to, to, to go change his opinion on gay marriage. They were the Hollywood gay bundlers were, were giving money to him left and right. So this idea that I am oppressed. How? I mean, and I don't know. Like, getting get made fun of ain't oppressed either. <laughs> well, I only recently was able to get married. Well, you can now. <laughs> I don't know. What, what, what oppression are we speaking of? That doesn't make you oppressed. These categories don't make sense. And then he goes to slavery. Well, slavery remains a permanent stain on our society, on our history, a fact that is, is used by DEI to label white people as oppressors. It doesn't, therefore, hold that all white people, generation after abol abol abolishment of slavery, should be held responsible for its evils. See, I wouldn't say held responsible. You're not held responsible. You're not necessarily oppressors. What you are are people who benefited from, from the country that ADOS built, and we never got the 40 acres and a mule. Nobody is talking about who you are individually. I do not care. But the country that allowed you to become a billionaire stomps on our head and grounds us to dust. And I can prove it, but I can't prove it through a DEI framework. I can't because it doesn't do that to one. It doesn't do that to Ling Me. It doesn't do that to, so I cannot prove it through that. It doesn't do that to Mr. Gupta. I cannot prove any of that through a DEI framework. I can prove it through an ADOS framework. So he's mixing all these stuff up, slavery, skin color. He's got all this stuff confused too. It's all a, it's a mess, and he's a mess right now. It's all a mess. The whole framing is a mess. Similarly, the fact that Columbus discovered America doesn't make all modern-day Italians colonialists. That's not what we're saying. We're saying, and I'm saying, that this, that this country fastened us to the bottom in the way that it never fastened anybody else to the bottom. And you have to make redress for that. That thing specifically, though, not for all disadvantaged people. Nobody is here to question your heart. I'm here to question how systems and institutions work in this country and who they work for. And here comes the NAACP riding in on a lame donkey. <laughs> I mean, all the time. I was accused of being a racist by the president of NAACP, among others, when I posted on X, formerly Twitter, that I had learned that the Harvard president search process excluded candidates that did not meet the DEI criteria. I didn't say that, that former President Gay was hired because she was a black woman. I simply said that I had heard that the search process by its design excluded a large percentage of potential candidates due to DEI limitations. My statement was not a racist one. It was simply an empirical uh, truth about the Harvard search process that led to gays hiring. So you just, the era of just, you got to make arguments now. I think, I think 2024 too is the period where everybody got to learn to make an argument or shut up. This is the period where you just run outside and say, racist, you're racist. And white people just run back in the house. That's over with. You got to be able to make a case for why something is racist and for why a system is racist, for why an institution is racist. You got to be able to go back. You can't just run outside and do that. And they're winning because they're winning not because they're brilliant. They're winning because our leaders are incompetent. It's one thing if we make the argument and they still do what they do. We did the best we could. We made the argument and what in the world going on? It's another thing that we making the wrong argument because we're trying to please other people. Stop trying to please other people.
He, and see, he don't even understand it. Uh, when, when former President Gay was hired, I knew little about her, but I was instinctually happy uh, for Harvard and the black community. Every minority community likes to see their representatives are uh, recognized in important leadership positions, and it is therefore an important moment for celebration. No, it wasn't mine. No, she wasn't mine. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't, she didn't hearken back to slavery. She wasn't mine. She wasn't yours. Like he doesn't even under, he doesn't understand that because this is this thing is built on skin. It's not built on lineage. This is an antiquated system. It, black worked back in the day, pre-immigration act of 1965. It worked because most of the people in this country who were who were Negro were who went back to slavery. So you didn't have to use other terms. Now you have to. You have to create a new identity. That's what ADOS is. I am inspired and moved by other success. And I thought that, that I thought of Gay's hiring at the pinnacle uh, leadership position at perhaps more, our most important and iconic university as an important, significant step for the black community. There is no black community. Not the way he speaks of it. That was not my win. That's why I don't like the first black. That's why I believe that immigrants and their progeny who come here, they should be viewed as immigrant Americans. Right? Because you have she has more in common giving her the affluent school she went to with, with someone who was an Indian American who came also and went to Harvard. She has much more in common with someone like that than she has with someone like me or you. Everything has to be redefined. Right? He talks about what he's done to help disadvantaged communities. Yeah. And let me go here. We are because we we're a little we're a little um on time. A little, we're a little running behind on time. Uh, the Harvard board should not have run a search process that had predetermined objective of hiring only a DEI approved candidate. Yes, and that's why you gotta stop saying hire a black woman. Why y'all saying that? Right? Any qualified, qualified people should be in that pool. We have a history in this country of disqualifying qualified ADOS people. Stop doing that. But when you look at it, we probably don't have enough qualified people because what America has done to us. So now you have to look at why ADOS don't show up. And you can't see that ADOS is not in any room because Claudine Gay is in the room. So as long as she's in the room and Barack Obama's president and Kamala Harris is vice president, you will never see the truth of what happened to us. Because what happened to us, we don't have the school. It's not about having the intellect. We have the intellect. We have the intelligence. We do not have the good schools half the time. We don't have the wealth. We don't have the security. So we hardly show up in these spaces to apply for these jobs. And you can't see it, though, because of people like Claudine and Barack who always show up and 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 people people don't know the difference. So, hey, somebody black, you all are really doing fine. You all are really doing great. No, I need a world where you see that we can't show up because of what's been happening to us, because of what America has been done doing to us. That's what I need. That's the world I need to live in. Why, why are any Negroes applying? I'll tell you why. We're drinking dirty water and going to the, 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 the bad schools underfunded. Parents don't have wealth. Can't nobody pay for school. Right? I, we can have that conversation. I can't have that conversation as long as Claudine Gay, Barack Obama, Kamala Harris, everybody in the world show up for all the powerful jobs. It's not us. And that's the preference. They mask our failure. And you got all your little gatekeepers. You got all your little gatekeepers outside. Riding for Claudine. Couldn't ride for ADOS. And when my concerns about plagiarism and gay's research, uh, the board, when I raised my concerns, the board said these claims were demonstrably false. And it threatened the New York Post uh, with immense liability if it published a story raising these issues. Ain't that something? They said it wasn't plagiarism. So what they basically saying? Lied and lied and lied so they couldn't lie no more. This is a problem, ladies and gentlemen. This is a bigger problem that I think people understand. And he's not just going after Claudine here. Look, the board chair, Penny Pritzker, they were talking about Harvard, should resign along with the other members of the board who led the campaign to keep Claudine, or keep Claudine gay, orchestrated the strategy to threaten the media, bypassed the process for elevating plagiarism, and otherwise greatly con uh, contributed to the damage that has been done. Then new, then new corporation board members should be identified who bring true diversity of viewpoint uh, otherwise to the board. 
<laughs> he he gonna get y'all too. He gonna get he gonna get everybody. He ain't playing. <laughs> Let me tell you. Mm -mm. <laughs> he ain't playing. He's not playing with y'all. I don't know what y'all did. Y'all done made that man. Y'all done made that man mad. Done made a billionaire. That man. Y'all knew who y'all was messing with. You knew exactly who you. And then they said, oh, he did. He said he wanted the diversity board. Let me make the, let me make it long and short. But he wanted the diversity office at Harvard to be eliminated. This thing right here. <laughs> that diverse office of for equity, diversity, uh, and inclusion and belonging. He said that y'all took off some stuff off y'all website. He said that don't change the fact that it don't make no sense that when I when, when people questioned you, you took it off the website. When I he said he said the O E the O D E I B has already taken down. This is some wild stuff, y'all. Has already <laughs> has already taken down much of the ideology and strategies that were on its website when I and others raised concerns about the office, how the office operates, and who it does and does not represent. Taking taking down portions of the website does not address the fundamentally flawed and racist ideology of this office and calls into further question the OE, ODEIB's uh, legitimacy. Oh, he going in. He going in. You hear me? Now, let me get to the gatekeepers real quick. Let me get to the gatekeepers real quick. It's a lot of y'all. MSNBC host uh, Simone Sanders Townsend believes Harvard President Claudine Gay was targeted because she is a black woman. Let, black woman. Let me say this. Y'all got to be quiet. If the if 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 you do something wrong and you get caught, you can't come say that no more. And where is the expectation? There used to be an expectation. I don't know where it went. That like you had to be on the up and up if you want to claim racism. It well, you you can't you gotta you gotta these claims have to be false or mostly false. You got like fifty. They found like fifty plus alleged new allegations. I didn't even put it up there. That can't be it. Now let me tell you one other thing. If you want people to stand with you because of quote unquote you're black and you stand with black people. When Harvard first, when Harvard, not just Adolf, when Harvard's first black faculty deans let go, were let go amid an uproar over Harvey Weinstein defense, you didn't stand with them. They were the first. They were Harvard's first black faculty deans let go amid uproar over Harvey Weinstein. They were doing what attorneys do. Whether you like it or not, attorneys represent people, even bad people. And if I was Weinstein, I am going to go and try to find some attorneys from Harvard. Well, Harvard said on Saturday, this is in 2019, that a law professor who has represented Harvey Weinstein could not continue as faculty dean of an undergraduate house after his term ends on June 30th, borrowing, uh, bowing, bowing to months of pressure from students. The professor, Ronald S. Sullivan Jr., and his wife, Stephanie Robinson, who is a lecturer at the law school, have been the faculty deans of Winthrop House, one of Harvard's residential um, houses for undergraduate students since 2019. They were the first African-American faculty deans in Harvard's history. Right? But when Sullivan joined the defense team of Mr. Weinstein, the Hollywood producer, in January, many students expressed dismay. Uh, saying that his decision to represent a person accused of abusing women disqualified Mr. Sullivan from serving in a role of support and mentorship to students. Mr. Weinstein is scheduled. Oh, that's, he, that's already done. Okay. Now, what did, what did Claudine say? Hold on. Let's just fast forward a little bit. F FAS Dean Claudine Gay called Sullivan's response to student concerns insufficient. So attorney was a being an attorney, right? That's what attorneys do. They be out here representing people. I know it's a shock. And instead of standing with them because you stand with stuff black, Miss Gay, that's right, you didn't do that. That's not what you did. You said that their defense 
was insufficient. Stop talking to me about some kind of racial solidarity with this woman. You didn't say, well, they, they, we might disagree. People have a freedom of thought. People have a right to defend people. Everybody's deserving of a defense. And the jury is going to decide. And they did. Ain't he in jail? Yeah, they denied Cordell West tenure. So don't tell me that you stand with all things. Don't, stand, don't tell me about racial solidarity. You all just, listen, all of you people just like to use us. Oh, run outside. The, the, the new elite. The new elite. Hold on. Where's the quote from her? Gay said, gay called Sullivan's response thus far insufficient, especially relative to the seriousness of students' concerns. When we think about the faculty dean role, part of it is the faculty dean as an educator, someone that's helping to connect students to, frankly, the excitement of intellectual and academic life, Gay said. But there's also a pastoral role, um, sort of an expectation of a special responsibility to the, to the well-being of the students who are part of the community. Now, you know when you make a statement about like that and you say that their explanation was insufficient, you know when you make a statement like that, ladies and gentlemen, you setting people up. You, 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 you are expecting, somebody is expecting some type of racial solidarity thing. You can't make, listen, you can't make a racial solidarity argument when she did that. It's out. When she said that, it's out. When she showed no support for them, it's done. It is finished. And nobody wants to talk about that? Hey, um, uh, 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 what's the child's name? Uh, uh, you ain't got nothing to say about, you don't have nothing to say about uh, uh, standing up for, for black people. What that, one of them deans was a black woman who had to get out of there, who Claudine Gay said their defense. They were a couple. One of a black man, black woman. What, what, what about her? You didn't say anything about Claudine Gay helping to get her out of there? Well, wait a minute. Nicole Hannah-Jones. You know, Nicole Hannah-Jones is always going to make herself the center of attention. So, so, so many, so many dumb takes on here, but this is top tier. Not one person calling Claudine Gay an unqualified for investment hire has seen her employment or college application. They assume she's unqualified because she is black, not because of some imaginary box. No, child, listen, these people are crazy. I'm just going to tell you like that. These people are crazy. This thing has run off the rails and they have bastardized what we were supposed to be trying to achieve as ADOS people. Going to gonna say we got to stand for a black woman, don't stand for other quote-unquote black people. She ain't ADOS, so I don't have any obligation. But if you had showed me something where she was standing up for ADOS people, I would assume that, okay, she's a person who's in solidarity with us, so we'll be in solidarity with her. She ain't. So, no, ain't nobody doing all that. Forget what you heard. Ain't nobody doing what you're talking about. Uh, Nicole Hannah Jones and the rest of you gatekeepers, NAACP, everybody. Ain't nobody doing none of this stuff y'all talking about. It's finished. It's cooked. It's over with. Let it go. Let it go. These people so dizzy and dim with it, and we just follow them off a cliff. Yeah, well, I support everybody black. Claudine don't. <laughs> also, you going, you, you, you living by a different standard than her. She can say that their defense is insufficient and let them get kicked and thrown away because they wanted to defend somebody who was accused of something dastardly. And the man ended up in jail. That's, hey, let the law do the law. You want to say that. You didn't have their backs, but now you want to come back here and we all supposed to have her backs when she done did all this plagiarism. I don't, even, I don't know if they had any plagiarism. Did they have any plagiarism? That couple that got kicked off? They get, got kicked off because they made women. It, made, it was doing the height of Me Too and it made folks uncomfortable. It, well, it made, it, it, students have concerns. Yeah, you little hothouse flowers. Y'all all have concerns. Wilt. Wilt, you little hothouse flowers. Jeez. This is, ins this, this, this is insane. And I'll leave it at that. I'm going to leave. It's, time to, it's time, to, time to go to break, fam. So let me, let me leave it at that for a little while. But this is, this is run amok. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know how else to say it. This whole thing has run amok. This whole diversity thing, it is, it's over with though. Everybody better call it a everybody better call it a day and a donkey. <laughs> We're done. We finished. How about that? I'll say I'll give you a, I'll I'll take a break for one second, fam, but then I will um 
I'll set up the phone. And uh, yeah, if you want to talk, you can talk. But this is crazy. I can't believe this. Stand in solidarity. Stand in solidarity with Claudine. Claudine don't stand in solidarity with Black. She's an elite. Of course she don't. <laughs> I'll be right back, fam. <laughs> Give me a few minutes. Set up the phones and I'll be back. Oh, people crazy.
All right, all right, fam. Woo. We are back. We are back. We are back. Um, let me let me go to the calls. Um, let me go straight to the calls. Coming to six seven eight first six seven eight. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hey, what's hey. new to you? How you doing? Mike from uh, I'm good. I'm good. This is Mike from College Park. Oh, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? So, <laughs> I'm listening. You, you, you on fire tonight, like as always. But, and I'm glad you're talking about this. What it shows is uh, um, the mediocrity we have it, that we that we are always. Um, I don't want to say in bed with, but. The, 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 the whole DEI situation and this called DEA situation, when I hear DEI, the, those three letters, diversity, I think of people of color, equity, I think of women, inclusion, I think of LGBT. I don't see ADOS anywhere in that. Mm. And we don't really benefit from it. And then we'll have people like Claudine Gay who get up. We, I mean, like, honestly, mediocre people that get in these positions, and then we're the ones fighting for them. Oh no, y'all shouldn't fire her because she's black and this, that, and the other. But where do these people ever fight for us, though? Mm. Just like you said, she never fought for us. So why are we fighting so hard for these people, these mediocre people, like you said, when we have qualified people that can't even get most positions in, in these in these colleges and universities? Mm. You know, I have a secondhand story from from Harvard. I had a cousin that had a full ride to Harvard. He got there and was so disappointed in his educational experience. And I asked him, you know, I'm going to HBCU, so I said, you know, what's, what's the difference? Like, what's, why did you not have a, a good, like, you know, good experience? Not a bad experience, but he just thought it was something else. He said, man, I sacrificed my work so hard to get here just to be sitting in class with mediocre legacy students. Mm. These people paid for their kids to go to this school, and I bust my butt to get here, and I got to sit here with them. He doesn't even tell people he went to Harvard. He, it's not that he's ashamed. He's just like, I thought it was something else. Mm-hmm. And yes, like, and you talked about this. We have our universities that are underfunded, underpaid. But guess what, Vivette? I'm going to use this for example. My wife of the family, their coach just got pulled by Duke to go coach as an assistant coach. And he was the head coach at FAMU. Now, mm-hmm. nobody's mad at him. I'm not mad at him. But they always come in our community and pluck our best out. Boom. Mm. Let me pull you. Let me pull you. Let me pull you. But then we'll ask for the crumbs from their school. Don't nobody want Claudine Gay at their school? This woman can't, she can't listen. She's a plagiarist. We don't even know that's her real name. They trying to get her to, 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 to go to Howard now. They trying to get her to go to Howard now. You want a plagiarist? <laughs> Why would you even want that? Oh, because she's black. But what has she done? Like you said, she ain't wrote no books. They keep co- every week, I'm seeing them coming out with 50 more. I'm like, how many letters did she write? Did she even write her own story? Her story could be a lie. We don't know nothing about this lady. Nothing. It's just that she looks like us. And that should not be enough for us to say, we're going to fight for these people. We got to wake up. We got mm. to wake up. This is crazy. Mm. Because at the end of the day, that. If we don't wake up, if we don't realize that these people are not us, for instance, everybody want to be black to this shit the fan. <laughs> when everybody hit the fan, then they start running off to their corner. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sitting in the leaves. No, 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 no. I'm God. I'm Ghanaian. I'm this. Right? But you, when you black, when you hate us, who you going to run to? You know what I'm saying? You don't have nothing to run to. Your, your country is here. What they did was they sold you a, a bag of goods and said, listen, Y'all ain't really American, but y'all American. And we fought, we, we, we ran with that. I, I, I'll say this. I, I'm, I'm, I was a Pan-Africanist growing up, right? Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, the nonsense I used to hear, okay? And you don't realize it's nonsense when you learned it, because I'm sure you went through that. Me too. I, I learned it too. I, we all, I we all you, guilty. Yeah, I know you did. I, I was short of the dashiki and the kusi, okay? I didn't buy those. <laughs> I just don't them upset right up with me about those. I didn't get those. But I still, listen, I ain't gonna lie, I still buy my shea butter. I don't care what nobody say, I'm still gonna use shea Take butter. Take care of your skin. However. <laughs> <laughs> Have dewy skin. However. <laughs> exactly. And listen to this. 
And everything you, you do, you know, you can get some good from it, but you got to eat the meat and spit out the potatoes. But let me tell you what, what, what us as ADOS have to be, we got to be vegetarians. Oh. Because a lot of stuff they be selling us ain't even good meat. It's, 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 it's crazy. So when I hear these things, like, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. You, bet, you remember when you went to school, and I'm, I'm sure they probably did this at Howard. You got them professors, they would say, listen, the class starts out at 100. All of y'all have A's. All you have to do is maintain this A through the semester, and, and you can pass this class. So when you look, if, if, if I use an example, the people in America that start out with hundreds of A's are white people. The people who start out Ooh. with zeros are the other people Ooh. are immigrants. Ooh. ADOS people, we start out in the negatives. Ooh. So if you make it past zero, it's a miracle. When you make it to 100, you are exceptional. And they always come and pull our exceptional people and put them in our, at, at big spots. Mm. And then when they don't want to use you no more, they throw you away. Oh, no, we don't, we don't really need you. Oh, they'll find an excuse because they can replace you Negroes now with an immigrant who they can control. They don't have to worry about you might come up and say something about slavery. Well, you know, we don't know the difference either, right? So we don't know the difference either. So we'd be like, oh, we got one over here. But but I appreciate it, fam. I got a lot of, I got the, the, the cause is thick today, so I can't let nobody take too long. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this. Just check your, listen, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to get off because I, I run along. Check your email. I sent you something. I'm letting you know okay. you have made a big change in the city of College Park. Okay. I appreciate Not you. Thank much. you. I will At check Gmail. it, fam. Thank you. Check it. Uh, which okay. one? My, 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 my like, personal one or my ADOS Foundation one? Uh... The no the YD. Okay, got you, got you. Appreciate it, fam. Yeah. All right, all right. Good night. You have a good one. All right, two o two. Hold on. Oh, hold on. What is going on? Okay, here we go. Two o two. What's your name? What you calling from? What's on your mind? This don't. Go. You know who it is. What it is. What's up, Alexander? Be out here hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Walk all up in, but let, let, let me just say some just a few housekeeping things. So, mm-hmm. just as a sidebar, understand, and, and this is just for the whole Jewish black relations things, because there's often sometimes a tendency uh, towards sometimes anti Semitism in our community. But you should note that Bill Ackman, the billionaire who mm-hmm. is coming out against Claudine Gay, Jewish. Mm-hmm. The chair of the Harvard Corporation, Penny Pritzker, is Jewish. Not only is she Jewish, she's a billionaire just like Ackman, and her family are, she's the heiress of the Hyatt Hotel fortune. Ooh. So I need to point that out because often in our community we think these things line up very easily. Now, let me add something to this. A few days ago on LinkedIn, the president of Dr. King's alma mater, Morehouse, came out and made a statement against Bill Ackman insinuating that his argument for removing Claudine Gay was racist. Now, I need to be very clear why this is so horrible. He is the president of one of the so-called Black Ivy League institutions, Morehouse College, and he is arguing with a billionaire, essentially calling him racist. Now, at the time that he made those accusations, what is clear to me is that he was not aware of the plagiarism accusations against Claudine Gray. He wasn't aware. He made the comments off cuff. Now, this is not just anyone. Dr. Thomas, who's the president of Morehouse, was the former professor of Bill Ackman at Harvard. This is huge because if you go down in the comment section, you will see Bill Ackman's billion.
millionaire friends arguing with Morehouse students who are calling his billionaire friends racist for making his comments against Claudine Gay. The reason why I'm bringing this up, because that is a rookie mistake by the president of Morehouse. You are jeopardizing the fundraising of a historically black college and university on behalf of a Haitian American woman whose career is exploding. I need you to get that. I need you to get that. I need you to get that. Because not only is Claudine Gay's fall at Harvard going to hurt us, but it's going to have a deleterious impact on some of our historically black colleges and universities. So that's the second thing. The third thing, when I was at Yale, I'm an alumnus of Yale, when I was there, I had a professor pull me aside. And he pulled me aside and he showed me some papers. He said, look at these papers. And I said, okay, well, what's this? They look like some elementary school papers. He said, no, these are your classmates. These are black classmates. Now, I look at the papers, it was egregious, Yvette. These, these people didn't have no business in college, and they were all black immigrants. They were all black immigrants. I was one of the few black Americans that were there. That's the third thing. Fourth thing, so about 70 years ago, there was a black woman that was born in a little town called Bedford, Virginia. She was raised in a family of 12 people, Yvette, in a shotgun house. They had no running water. Her father was a serial abuser, and her mother he abused was disabled due to polio. She grew up in absolute poverty, absolute abject poverty, but somehow, you know, coming from that abusive family, she worked her way up got a community, community college degree at Virginia Western Community College. Then she went on and got a bachelor's in criminal justice, graduated magna cum laude for Roanoke College. Then she got a master's degree from Virginia in political science from Virginia Tech. Then she got a master of law from Yale Law School. And she finished it all off with a PhD in political science at University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. She wound up becoming one of the first black women to be tenured at Princeton University in political science. And then she went on and capped off her career at Vanderbilt, where she was a tenured professor in the Department of the Political Science there. But that's not what she's known for at this moment. She went through all of that event with that illustrious career only to retire and have a woman by the name, a Haitian American woman by the name of Claudine Gay plagiarize her work. Do you hear me, that? Do you hear me? Gotcha. Dr. Carol Swain. That is the research of, the, of a black woman, Adolf, who uh, 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 Claudine Gay plagiarized. Not only that, not only that, there was a black boy who grew up in Louisville, Texas. His father was convicted for rape, and he was left alone to be raised on the streets. Raised himself, but somehow he made it through, even through gangbanging, went off to get a bachelor's and a master's, capped it off with a Ph.D. at Penn State. But his work in economics caught the eye of the Harvard University president by the name of Lawrence Summers. And he brought him to Harvard, and he became one of the youngest tenured professors at Harvard, I believe, at 26 or 28. He is now considered one of the foremost economists in the world. He published a very controversial study on police unarmed violence of black Americans, and that drove the ire of a woman by the name of Claudine Gay. In, in, full, in, full, dis, in, full, dis, in full disclosure, in full disclosure, Alexander, it drew the ire of another woman who was not, it was me. <laughs> but keep going, keep going, man. <laughs> So the professor's name is Rolling Fryer, Rolling Fryer, and she wind up, they wind, they're now finding out that the harassment allegation that was made mm. against him years ago that cost him, uh, 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 removed him from his uh, academic uh, uh, research center, they removed his grants, they took everything from him, that was all at the direction of Claudine Gay. 
all of it. So here you have three black people, uh, ADOS, who came from, including Ron Sullivan, who you brought in 77 for, who you brought up, who came from the bottom. That's us event, which you're talking about coming up uh, with, with beer, dirty drinking water. That's us. And here you have a woman whose, whose, whose credentials were nowhere near ADOS, and she took all of us down. I need you to see that. I need you to catch that. I need you to catch that. She was allowed to rise and not only replace us, but those of us who were there bring us down. Did you get that? Did you get that? That's why this diversity thing is so true. And I'm going to end on this. All right, so listen. There are some people who will say that she's being fired for racism. There's some people who say it was over anti-Semitism. But let me tell you something. Three things can be true at the same time. Some people could want Claudine Gay gone because they're racist. Some people could want her gone because they believe she's anti-Semitic. And some people could want her gone simply because she's a plagiarist. But let me ask you something, Vip. If you or I were driving down the street and the police pulled us over for speeding, and in the course of that traffic stop for pulling us over for speeding, they run our license and proof of insurance and registration and discover that we, that there is an arrest warrant out for us for murder. Event. Are the police going to let you or I go on account that they just pulled us over for speeding? No. 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 You take the defendant as you find them. And as a consequence, no, we didn't know all of that was going on when you testified. But now we have discovered that you are a complete academic fraud. You you, you plagiarized your papers. Event. She not only plagiarized her dissertation, she plagiarized the acknowledgement section of her dissertation. She copied I knew I saw that. I saw that. Oh my God. Acknowledgements in her dissertation. This is how bad it is. And so I, I'm of the opinion that Harvard is not going far enough. Not only should she be removed from the presidency, she, her tenure should be revoked and they should rescind her PhD degree. And I'll stand on that. I will stand on that. People work entirely too hard to get these credentials for someone to be allowed, as you said, to rise when they never should have been allowed to. And I'll mm. just leave it at that. Mm. Woo! Thank you, Alexander. Woo-hoo! <laughs> All right, you have a good one, fam. Happy New Year! <laughs> All right. Oh, my goodness. Like, and let me say something. Let me say something as it relates to, um, to Friar. Like, here's my thinking. You know, I don't have to, I don't have to agree with a person, but if I agree, if I disagree, and y'all know I disagree with Friar's work, but I will challenge you on the work. Right. I'm not going to be in a position where I take away your livelihood based on allegations or whatever. That's not what I'm going to do. But I feel like I can challenge you on the work that you've done and meet you there. I'm not I'm I can't do the the, the, Cla the Claudine Gay part. <laughs> I just wanted to put that part in there. Um let me let me go to the next call. I am going to um oof, um to nine oh nine, nine oh nine, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Happy New Year, Yvette. Hey, what's Dr. going Stone, on? Brother. All right, all right. Listen, uh, this thing is timely because here's the deal. I keep telling people this. This is our last chance to get it right. We don't get it right this time, we're done. Period. Now, this thing that you're talking about is real on so many levels. They, um, I think we could agree that what we're confronted with is what? Um, I hate to even use this word because other folk use it, but it's, it's applicable in this situation, and that is replacement. I know a woman who her father was from Ghana, and he came to this country in the late 1950s, and she said that he told her that when he lived here, um, he was a boarder in these uh, white folks' homes. And these were not right-wingers. These are folks who, I guess, would consider themselves lefties. And they made a comparative contrast between Africans and black Americans. Mm -hmm. This is in the late 1950s. 
So my point is, this has been an issue for a long time, and it's been an issue longer than people are willing to uh, recognize. Mm-hmm. So, but I think what has happened is over time. Well, I know what has happened. One over time, they've gotten more emboldened with it. And then the other fact is this. I'm glad you're sitting down for this one. Uh, you got folks who look like us, who are call themselves Pan Africanist, conscious, whatever. They've contributed to this. They're the same ones. Make no mistake. They know. Uh, I mean, you and Tone and everybody else aside, they they they're aware of. No, I won't say it aside. They're aware of the work that you've been putting out and uh, trying to, I uh, guess you could say, course correct and all of that. They know this. And they also know about the disparaging things that some of these folks who are either African or Caribbean have been saying about uh, Adolf's folk. But guess what? They don't care. They don't care because ultimately they concur with it. So in many ways, our leadership has failed us dismally, mm-hmm. dismally. They've contributed to this. And and what has happened is what y'all have done in your own way is said, you know what, the buck stops here, no more. Mm-hmm. And so but what has happened is they, uh, what the white folks do, well, they say, well, how can you say I'm racist? Uh, uh, this person over here, he's black or she's black, even though they're from an, another country. See how they, they, they can try to play those kind of games. And see, because that's the one who's deemed as more how do we say, uh, exotic and more sexy, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Am I making sense? Or am I you make, you're making thing? sense. You're making sense. It's fetishized in a way, though. And, and yeah, that's what happens. And so, so, so the thing is, see, it's more than just the reparations issue. That's big, to be sure. But it's a bunch of other stuff. I think I might have said this before, and I will continue to hammer this point. Those folks taught us to hate ourselves. I don't think that can be stressed enough. I know that sounds weird. Say, well, wait a minute. How can these people? I heard one of your callers say something about, you know, the, and I remember those days, the, the boobas and the, the, the kente cloth and, and, and all that and the burning of incense and, and hotep, this and all that kind of stuff. What many of us didn't realize is that what they were doing, you know, it's one thing to embrace um, what was happening in terms of other cultures. But the problem has been with us. We have a bad habit of doing this. We embrace other stuff at the expense of our black American heritage. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. And 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 because the thing is this, um, what we don't understand is that some of these people, and I think we need to be clear, Claudine Gay is one thing. She's not a writer. But you had other people, let's say, who might have been American born and raised, who were not Adolf, who were writers. I think we can agree on that. Mm-hmm. And I think we can also agree that you had those who came here from, let's say, uh, the Caribbean, be the Anglophone or Francophone, but mostly Anglophone, who were writers. Uh, I mean, a man named Mike Felwell was a part of the uh, Civil Rights Movement. He was from Jamaica, and he's, he's clearly a writer. Um, and, and other people. But what has happened, they've become the, 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 the ones who are, um, uh, who are adversarial. The reason why they've become emboldened is because of people who are in the academy um, who, um, uh, who have encouraged black folks to feel inferior to them. I mean, there's a Jamaican woman I know right now. She and I communicate by WhatsApp. And she told me, because she's a retired academic, she said, an African-American brother said to me, he said, that he was upset because instead of him getting this position at whatever school it was, they gave it to a Caribbean person. That's what she told me. This is a Caribbean woman herself. And she's she's a writer for black folks in America. But but, but what I'm saying is, this has been and continues to be a problem. It's in academics, it's in Hollywood, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And for us to sit around and act like this is no big deal, uh, you're out of your mind. So I think what you're trying to say, correct me if I'm wrong, for people to be trying to ride for Claudine Gay, you're really making a fool out of yourself because, one, this woman is not a writer. Number two, they're using her against Ados. Exactly, exactly. I'm going to land it soon, fam. I got to get to them, trying to get to as many calls as I can. But I, I agree with all your points. You, you can't get me the line. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to land my plane here. 
I appreciate it. I appreciate it, fam. As always, I appreciate you. Yeah. I, woo. It's a lot. Let me go to 703-703. Um, What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hey, what's up? What's up, you bet? Man, What's going on? You. What's going on hey, with you? Hey, Brandon calling from uh, Ad Adolph, Maryland. Uh, man, it's just so good to hear your voice. Uh, back on the show. We back on the grind. Look, I was going to say, um, you know, the this is a great, well, those were two great callers. Uh, I mean, all the callers have been great, but uh, I was just really thinking about the previous callers and everything that they had to say. But um, this is a great way, I was going to say, this is a great way for us to start the year with, you know, one, with the Cardi and Gay um, uh, aspect, and then, you know, the day for, um, uh, 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 What's his name? Cat Williams to kick in, Ooh. and and I was gonna tie the two to, the, I was gonna tie the two together because in the interview with Shannon, um, he said something that made me think about you, and then I, I thought about um, this whole Cardi and Gay thing. He he, uh, Shannon was trying to cape for like another comedian, and Cat said you have an unnatural allegiance. The losers, and that is not like you. Yeah, I remember I got and that. Somebody, like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm 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 say that as a meme. You have an unnatural allegiance to losers. And the other thing is, before you get into it, what we have too, and this is Shannon, you can't see a loser for a loser. Like, you think because, oh, well, Cat ain't been in movies or whatever. Okay. You think you think that makes him a loser? You don't see him going around doing shows or whatever, selling out places? He's a loser because other people told you he was a loser? But go on, fam. I'm sorry. I saw that. I saw. I watched I watched right, 35 right. minutes of that. That was good. No, no. I mean, no, the whole thing was good because, you know, you, you, you think about, you know, everything that, that, you know, I've learned from you and Antonio, all of us who tune in and, you know, follow the movement. Like, we just really think about how, um, you know, Claudine Gay, you know, goes, you know, that, that story uh, attacks, you know, black politics, black uh, academics. And then, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, that, that impairs us is that, you know, we can't have these conversations without centering celebrities. And so then you, you add in the, um, the, the Cat Williams aspect where he, like, completely eviscerated the entire, like, deck in a veil. And, 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 you know, you think about, he talked about everybody, you know, we, we as black people, we start off our morning, you know, listening to Tom Joyner or Ricky Smiley and, you know, and as, as some of that, the, the content is, is just so sophomoric, it never gets to what the issues are. And then you go to the commercial breaks and those commercial breaks, like kind of reinforce the content that, that those programs are putting out. And so it's been, it's really hard to really have the conversations that, you know, that we're having tonight around, you know, Claudine Gay and other political uh, issues in our community because, I mean, we, we have always seen, we have always, as a community, deified these celebrities. And just the way that, you know, um, Kat was able to, like, confidently, like, you know, this excoriate them and then you know you bridge that gap you know because it because it comes on, on the heels of party and gay and, and her and the plagiarism and you know i mean it's just everything that well, that uh and and then you see you see the nicole hannah jones you see these other uh you know media people who are responsible for you know uh communicating our plight, you know, to the rest of America, just, you know, they they fail at every level in every way. And I don't know, I was just thinking about that and then well, I thought I think, about well, that. I, no, they I think I think you're unnatural allegiance to But but to, to lose to and I think I think that's kind of what I have been saying in this space too. It's kind of like I don't understand why my people can't see certain people as losers. Like, you know, like, when I tell you this person is a loser, he makes Bucci Bear cartoon. Everybody's like, I'm talking about, you didn't have, oh, hold on. And one thing that struck out to me, and I'm not, I, do, I did two things, well, a few things struck out to me from the Cat Williams interview, but let me just point out two. Because for those who don't know, he did an interview with Shannon Sharp, right? Um, and he, he went at everybody, and the people have been going at him. You can't consider him shooting, he was just firing back. Right, he was returning fire. And you could tell he had saved up a lot of fire for a long time. And so he said, one thing he said, and I think about the Epstein files, I think about everything that's coming undone right now. He said, this is an era of truth, kind of. To I'm paraphrasing. But he kind of said, every, every all this stuff, everybody's, everything's going to be revealed. All this stuff, people have been, uh, been able to hide these masks, what they've been doing, all that stuff's coming undone. He said that. And then he said something else. He said, 
He said, you know, and I don't want to get religious or nothing with y'all, but he said Satan can't even bless his own people. What what these what the, what these what I'm gonna be scared of? Like he said, you that's why you got the white guy who's the mm-hmm. comic, he can't even cross over. So it's just like you look at people who have even when I look at stuff, I've had way more access and been on way more shows and stuff. Why aren't you moving in some direction, right? Why haven't you should have been catapulted out of here, right? And I think we are in an era where people are going to start demanding some level of truth. Like people are going to start asking questions. You And you've seen it like the, the end of 2023. Like we saw so much stuff. We're seeing these files come out. I'm starting to see quotes. We saw, we saw, we saw what it allegedly Diddy and all these other people. We're going to start seeing things. We started, the, Oprah was fighting with the Taraji and she was telling the truth and talking about it. Like all of the, the, the emperor has no clothes. And I think this is the era that we're going to see it. And I tend to believe that people are born for a specific era. Right and to do a specific thing, and I think I think I think yeah he said Satan can't create anything, and so I think you are I think you are seeing a lot right now, and I I think it's great to put Ados in that space because if this is a moment and I feel like it is where truth is going to be uplifted, there is no way for truth to be uplifted without uplifting this movement. It does not happen without that, and I'm seeing like a lot of stuff. So I understand why you could kind of put that in the same category, but I'll let you finish up, fam. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree 100% with what you're saying. And, you know, even, you know, just to um, add on one, things that, you know, you you and uh, Antonio just always prepped us for is, like, this is also evidence of how they are moving away from our community. Uh, you know, when you're just exposing and just, it's, all, it's almost like a fire sale. And I just feel like next year this time, like, black entertainment is going to look completely different. But uh, just to really close it out, I was just going to say, like, if they are given, like, you know, 2024, this is an election year. If they are giving us this, you know, the first two, three day, uh, uh, January 2nd, January 3rd of this year, just imagine what this year is about to unfold. And so that's why, you know, I'm glad, you know, I'm armed with the truth and I'm glad, you know, we're here promoting this advocacy. And, uh, man, appreciate just keep doing what you're doing. And I, you know, I, everybody else, just keep supporting. I appreciate you, fam. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you for mu- thank you so much for calling in. Yeah, it feels like everybody. It feels like, listen, if you've been out here and you've been out here and you've been frauding or you've been defrauding people and you've been lying, like something's coming up in everybody and ain't going to take it no more. <laughs> like everybody who has been like holding a child. I saw a little bit of that little, yep, whatever, you know, which I want to say the whole word again, but a little bit of that file. Woo. Woo. People finna have a hard way to go. <laughs> let me go to um, let me go right now to um, uh, 256 256 what's your name where you calling from what's on your mind what up you ladies Trey Slay what's going I'm on Trey Alabama what's going on with you nothing much nothing much nothing much um this DEI space like <laughs> everything about it is so weird like you, you can't like pinpoint or pin anything down when it comes to the logic behind it besides the fact that everybody wants to ride on our coattails right like when it comes to diversity equity and inclusion the basis is our oppression and like nobody wants to put that into effect and like you were saying earlier like a Claudine Gay is, is the epitome of DEI. She's a, a quote-unquote double minority, right? She's, a, she's black and she's a woman. And you have all these people out here fighting and saying that Harvard is racist, but when has Harvard not been racist? Like, they buried studies on slavery and their, their involvement in slavery. They had their own people researching so that they could bury it. You have Renty, you have a us. Like, so when has Harvard not been a racist institution, even when it, but in this instance, they're doing the right thing because she's a plagiarist, like, and nobody wants to hold her accountable. And like, I think about, you know, going into positions and not having the acumen, the accreditation, all of those things. I remember six years it should have been my senior year in, in law school, right? I get a letter from, uh, I get a whole packet from the Army because I fucked up to the Army. Mm-hmm. I took the ASVAB mm-hmm. in my house. My grandma fried chicken for the military. But my English sco- score was so low, I wouldn't be able to come in where I wanted to, so I was like, forget it. Mm-hmm. But 
when I'm supposed to go into my six year my, my, my senior year of law school, I get a packet from the military wanting me to be a JAG officer. Mm-hmm. Now, I hadn't finished my undergrad. I hadn't started law school, none of that stuff. I could have took all this stuff and filled it out and, and, you know, went there and got turned around. And since this is fantasy land, you know, the ADOC movement would have been 10 toes behind me talking about how the military is doing things and this, and the third. But me holding myself accountable, I would have to say, hey, let me reach out to Vet. Hey, look, I'm going to make this post. You know, I wasn't ready for what's going on. I know the ADOC movement, they, they turn into the open. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I know the foundation is turning over, but I was unqualified for what's going on. And I'm going to make a statement, and I need to be pushed. And that's what Claudine gave me to do in this situation. But she's not one of us, so she doesn't understand it. She don't understand that she needs to be talking to, to the goofball at the NAACP and saying, <laughs> look, back down from what you're doing. She needs to be talking to the other HBCU presidents and say, back down from what you're doing because what I did is egregious. Yeah, I really screwed the pooch on this one. And that, that's what you do. You don't let people run yeah, out. Like if you know, academia. Like if somebody said, I got a video on you, you was doing so and so and so, and we got you on video event stealing from the, you stole some Cartier glasses from the shop or something. Like <laughs> I can't, like if I know that happened, I can't be like, we gonna protest. Like, Y'all, I was, I was oh, yeah. sticking fingers at the car. Like, what are you doing? You, and, and, and they're still doing it, though. Like, you don't support people. Mm-hmm. At what point, when they come out with the proof, I'm not saying you can't listen. White people do it, too, is not an excuse. <laughs> like, you got, y'all got to stop. Mm-hmm. At a certain mm-hmm. point, like, we used to be like, we used to do that for real racism. Like, let's stand together. Now it's just mm-hmm. like, this is our favorite. Like, when real racism happened, like you said, with mm-hmm. Renty and with us and all this other stuff, y'all don't say nothing. But now y'all y'all want, it's about the black woman. It says, that's what it is. It's just, we're going to be. And Like, no, that's not what happened. Are these allegations true or not? If they are true, if you, if you love these people, you would have said, people, please, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. It looks like I'm reviewing my stuff, and it looks like I ain't good at this. <laughs> Exactly. And I want to kind of tie to a, a, another tang, tangential point in, in black America this past couple of years, and it's Deion Sanders, right? Because everybody, all, all of black America has put all their weight behind Deion Sanders. Like, we've never had any other Adolph coaches around the country. Like, we have hundreds of them. <laughs> and they all need our support. And it's like, it's easy. Like, everybody's a bandwagoner, and it's easy when it's in the spotlight, like with Claudine Gay. I was, I was just in the spotlight. It was in the casual. And I was like, really? So, like, it's everywhere. So everybody can jump on the bandwagon and be like, oh, oppression, black people, whatever. But, like, when it's really that time to, like, support all these other people, to support all these other schools, all these other black people who've been moved out, just like the, the, two, um, the two things you showed earlier. Like, nobody has anything to say. Like, I didn't know anything about the, the two things that were removed, but, like, nobody has made an uproar about that because of, of, of the laziness. Yeah. Well, it changes the narrative. It's kind of like what Alexander says about, yeah, yes, Ackman is Jewish, but he's also calling for the chair of the board to resign, who is also Jewish, right? So that changes the narrative when, when you see those two people going at it, when you see him calling for her resignation. Well, it, well, well if, you, if you really talked about how Claudine Gay has not stood with Adolf's people, you can't make a racial solidarity argument. So, And I wouldn't be surprised if, if these people didn't know it, if half of them didn't know it, but it, it messes up the argument that you're trying to make. But all these people are making the dumbest arguments in the world and making us into a fool. Like you, if you're supposed to rep me, I look a fool if I let you represent me and you doing and you riding on somebody who actually did plagiarize. Like it's one thing if you didn't know and she told you, I, she told you I ain't did it, I ain't never did it, I wouldn't do nothing like that. And you stood with her. The minute the stuff comes back and said this happened, like we have proof and it happened multiple times. This is not a one-off. This is a pattern. You got to stand down. That's it. It's mm-hmm. over. And just. And and, and 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 my last point, maybe, if we don't get into something else, but my last point is I just want to kind of piggyback off of that and bring it, like, to local politics, right? You have, um, like, like um, Alexander was saying earlier, um, Ackman is going at Claudine Gay and, and the other Jewish lady. In Decatur, what they're doing and what they have done is they're trying to tear down 
um, recreational centers that are mm. that are in the Adolph community. And what they did first was they tore down TC Alvin, which is a recreation center that's in a very affluent neighborhood and they're turning it into a pickleball state. So they do things like that, like they do things like call out their own, like they'll have that call out with their own just so that they can make sure that we're oppressed in the same way. And I'm going to just leave it at that. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Trey. Appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. As always. Good call as always. Thank you so much. And let me, I'm going now to um, 678-678. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hi, Beth. It's Ray. How are you? Doing How pretty good. You? How about yourself? I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, Hello? Yeah. I'm still here. You're very faint. I'm sorry. I, I wanted to go back, if I may, a little to what you were saying earlier um, about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, because it seems to me that this is this is fine to argue or debate or hash out as university policy on the board of the trusteeship, whatever. They, but Ackman's argument defines DEI as an established organization, as well as policy, as well as some McCarthyism some type of HUAC undertaking being carried out by anybody who isn't white or inclined to enlarge and enrich uh, uh, his or other corporate interests for very specific reasons. And to me, perhaps I'm confused, but this is the same type of argument that was being pushed two years ago or more about CRT. Oh, it's not that long ago. It's not that long ago. It's not that long ago. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So you're so quick. <laughs> but um, if you were interested in establishing justice, and and you did mention CRT, I remember that now. Mm -hmm. You did say that. But if you was really interested in delivering a better ideology than DEI that works, let him write it out in detail. Let him. Uh, I'll use your term, write it in specificity. But all he's doing in the article that I assume he wrote is, is stirring the confusion pot in favor of this nostalgic yearning that he and others have to resurrect uh, the old uh, standard of, uh, uh, I don't know what it is, all, all white, white only, uh, Ivy League institutions, but it's no different from the arguments made by Alan Bakke against so-called affirmative action mm -hmm. as a reverse racism. Supposedly, this is something that's wielded by some some ADOS people or black people, and everybody should know by now. We don't dictate policy, <clears throat> and we don't dictate practice in any U.S. institution mm -hmm. whatsoever. We never have. In every instance, by every uh, any person uh, 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 classified black being posted by uh, uh, white people into any authority position, uh, the human cry is uh, is identical. They are taken away from us. We're always we're perceived. The perception is manipulated as our our specific group being perceived as taking something away away from from uh whatever the united states i guess but um <coughs> this is far less true when other diverse races are included in anything now, ironically <coughs> it, it's it's the main charge that was filed against jack johnson over 100 years ago and jackie robinson 40 years later you know they're taking something away it it, it almost doesn't matter what ADOS people think, speak, uh, uh, or, or have as our emotional needs, because perception is always manipulated against us in this identical way. It's the same way that sharecropping was sold to us. It's the same way that uh, entertainment as the road to riches is still being sold. Um, as long as you stay stuck under, under everybody else, then but somehow... That's that's generally perceived but, but, to be. But let me let me let me let me make some push, <laughs> let me make a little let me give a, let me let me offer a little bit of pushback. 
The problem is okay. when when he's when you're talking about ADOS specifically, you're dead wrong if you say that. Like if you say the stuff and you're right, like when you make that argument to ADOS, you're dead wrong. But if you make that argument to people of color in general that you're not necessarily oppressed, then you're dead right, right? Because you're not necessarily oppressed as a Mexican-American. You're not necessarily oppressed as an Ecuadorian. You're not necessarily oppressed as a South African in America. You're not necessarily oppressed as those people. So I would argue, it, and, you, and it did go, and it does go back to Baki, which I've always said was wrongly decided. Um, you know, in terms of in terms of diversity, because affirmative action was supposed to be about redress, and it and it led to a bastardization, right? So that we don't even get to talk about. I can't even make a case for ADOS because all, everything is diversity. I can't make an ADOS case anymore. That would be my pushback. <coughs> I see, and, and you are correct. You are correct. Those persons are not of various and sundry nation concepts are oppressed by their nation concept. Their nation concept needs to uh, uh, work it out so that they can, you know, have more just and, and fair and environmentally uh, appropriate uh, access to resources and, and, you know, experience better treatment. But the notion that the whole planet needs to come to the United States for redress and for better conditions was not spurned by us. Mm-mm. We didn't we didn't Mm-mm. cause that to go into effect. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. We didn't and we didn't do it at why. all. We didn't do it at all. But my pushback to that too, we, you're right, we didn't do it. But my pushback to that too is we allowed it to happen. During the during the you know, during the whole thing when the making of Hispanics as a group Hispanics told ADOS leaders, hey, don't worry about it. We're not competing with you, right? We just want to get what we... Now, they used to be considered white. But when money came in, all of a sudden, they get to be considered people of color, brown people. I don't think... We're not in control of globalization. So, absolutely, you're absolutely right. We didn't create that. But I will say that we never... We didn't fight back against that. We, we agreed that everybody... Even if you go look at the NAACP's mission statement right now, we have this idea that we are all people of color the same. And so people like Ackerman, who is is not a fool, right, by a long shot, is going to take advantage of that when he's trying to make an argument. And I'm saying, like, the best argument, the only argument is an ADOS argument. There is no diversity argument. There is no people of color argument. They do not hold water. There is no disadvantage argument. It doesn't hold water. And Ackerman, he said disadvantage is his own thing. And I'm like, you're talking about how this doesn't make sense, and then you said it yourself. So he said his own, he messed up, too, in his own argument. But what I'm saying is that, like, we haven't fought the fight that we should be fighting. That's what I'm saying. I agree, and I think no one is abler to do that than yourself. Um, and I, I, you know, emotionally and, and you know, from from a, a neighborly perspective, definitely do that in full because I've never found you wrong. I think you are the friend oh, welding of your gin or the uh, Ida B. Wells of your gen. And so I appreciate you, appreciate everything you've taught, everything you have spread, and you should watch out for plagiarism yourself. Oh, child, I already like, got it. But thank you. I already <laughs> <laughs> have it. It's too late. It's too late. <laughs> that shot been fired. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you know, I don't know who else they are stealing and robbing from other than besides you and you know a few other well-known speakers that I've heard but I certainly have definitely found myself amazed at how many other different people will jump right up and say exactly what you said knowing their group has no such history mm-hmm. their, their group has no such uh, um, experience so you know yeah I I but yes, thank you. Again. No, thank you. I appreciate thank it. So, and thanks to Alexander. Too. Absolutely, that was great. His yeah, that was a great call. It's always great. To, it's always great to hear from Alexander. So yeah, that was a that was a great call. That was absolutely great call. Thank you, thank you, fam. I appreciate it. I absolutely right. appreciate. It. Thank you for okay. calling in. Yeah, and I think she I think she makes good points about like you know there's a lot of stuff that we don't create and we get caught in it, but like. You you she so she's right about that and she's right about how they use that to try to get at us. You are responsible for how you play the cards that you are dealt, though. Like, you are responsible for that. And we are not playing the cards that we're dealt right. 
That's just what it is. We, you, you are responsible for what happens to you. That's all you can do. You don't have, there's nothing else you can do. There's nothing else you can be responsible for other than the cards that life hands you, whatever life does. You, know, you never know what life's going to do. Life's going to life. And how you navigate that, how you deal with that is important. So I'm um, going out of 443. Uh, this will probably be my last call of 443. What's your name? Uh, where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hello? Hey, 443, what's going on? Oh, this is George from the DMV. I called in to talk about the Karen outing of Claudine Gay. Did you know that Barack Obama was pulling strings behind the scenes? I heard. To keep Claudine Gay. I heard. Uh, in the, uh, hello? Yeah, I said I heard about that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Also, I feel like liberals at Harvard and liberals in general caved in to Republicans, and that's why uh, Claudine Gay is uh, currently out. And you made, a, you made a show predicting that they were caved in to Republicans and get her out of there. Mm-hmm. In, addition, in addition, I don't think she had any business dealing with the um, Palestinian protesters at Harvard University, because she was not equipped to answer those questions on Capitol Hill when they questioned her about the nope. protest. No nope. amateur hour. It was amateur hour. So, I don't know what Harvard's going to do now, because now conservatives are talking about a merit-based meritocracy. They only want the most uh, qualified candidates. But we don't really live in a merit-based meritocracy society. As we've seen with the college admission scandal, when people were able to buy their kids way into school, and the conservatives didn't really say anything, Mm -hmm. that's all I have. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Carl. I appreciate you calling in. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, you know, I, I heard that Barack Obama was, 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 was trying to navigate, and you know, you and you know, you in quite a pickle if Obama can't say. <laughs> if Obama can't say, you know, this is the same Obama that told that told basketball players to, to basically shut up and dribble, right? So you know, he told you know he didn't want no reparations, he didn't want it, but that Claudine Gay, that's where you show up, right? That's your first black president. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that's your first black president. How you feel? <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I don't, I don't know what to make of everything that's happening. Um, but I do hope, and I wish, and I'll say this again before I go. Um, I want to thank everybody for calling in, but I do hope this is an era of truth. I do hope that we are currently in an era of 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 truth telling and that kind of stuff. Um, because it's just it's just too much. It's just too much. So, you know, I want to thank, I want to thank everybody tonight. Please hit the like button on your way out. Um, I appreciate you. And yeah, we got to keep, we got to fight. This ain't no, the stuff we've been doing, it ain't, the stuff we've been doing ain't going, it ain't going, it ain't going to do it no more. Like we have to fight and for what belongs to us. And what happens with our legacy organization is that they have been unwilling to fight for what's on the table. And they don't want to fight. They've always thought, well, it's us against white people. And it's just like, no, you may have white people who want to do work with you and do some good. And you may have people of color who are trying to take things that do not belong to them. So we have to we have to we have to have a sensible fight. We have to fight for what is ours. We have to fight for redress. And as this people of color um, diversity, as these ideas burn to the ground, we should be actively trying to build up something better. Um, and so I ask everybody, you know, if you if you can, please join. Go to joinados.com. 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 Um, if, you, if you're new here and you don't know what we stand for, go to adosfoundation.org. Go to the Frequently Asked Questions. You can get information. Hey, ain't nobody, ain't nobody else going to do it. <laughs> so it is what it is, fam. I will see you all next time. Please keep it easy, breezy. Don't bother nobody. Don't let nobody bother you. Get some sleep. All right? All right, fam.